Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. So we'll start out tonight with a gold chart. And uh, the reason I'm pulling this up is because I want to compare this to the Bitcoin chart. So you can see that gold has pretty much done nothing since 2013, 2014. If we go over to the Bitcoin chart, you can see that this is pretty much the same time frame. Now, Bitcoin ran up to that 1200, the old high and then dropped all the way down to about 200 actually and so big bear market not the same thing with gold you can see that gold was a high of around 1430 ran down to about a thousand and now we're back in the middle at about 1200 but both bitcoin and gold are below where they have been for a number of years uh, but bitcoin is trying to get into new highs uh, so definitely a much more bullish chart pattern on Bitcoin. Now, I had predicted that Bitcoin would possibly do another one of these blast offs. And I said that it would have to happen fairly quickly because those types of things are rapid moves. It's starting to look like we're not going to get that. We're getting a breakdown today. You can see uh, we're breaking down to about 1187. Now, Bitcoin tends to snap back very fast, so this could easily be the bottom, and by the time I finish this video, we could be up into new highs. That's how crazy this market is. But it's starting to look to me uh, bizarre, absolutely bizarre top formation. You ever seen that? And that looks like a cross. Uh, crazy, crazy formation. We know we had that 1350. Uh, top come in there and just a huge move huge selling coming in uh, the Chinese are still locking up the coins so maybe that's Chinese selling as I've speculated in the past but uh, it's looking like Bitcoin is going to do another correction uh, probably down to at least a thousand maybe lower so we'll see I could be wrong I've been wrong so many times on this chart it's very hard to predict now the other story with cryptos is this uh, during this move down in Bitcoin, we've seen a huge move up in the second, third tier cryptocurrencies. You can see here that Ethereum is now $3.61 billion market cap. It wasn't that long ago that Bitcoin itself was around a $10 billion market cap. So that's absolutely crazy. You can see a $42 price for Ethereum, and you have to remember Ethereum Classic is in there at 175. That's the other side of the fork. It is rallying as well. You can see on these charts, let me pull them in closer so you can see the charts. So as uh, Bitcoin is kind of falling off, these other coins are really starting to rally. Dash as well. Dash is now $633 million market cap. Uh, that's formerly dark coin but i mean who had heard of it uh, until recently it, i mean it's just had a phenomenal run here you can see the performance here of dash let's get out to the six month chart actually we'll put on a one year so you can see the move from a, a baseline of around 10 to almost 100 almost a tenfold move since last year so that's moving from, you know, $50 million to a half a billion dollars and more. So crazy action going on. And the other thing I want you to note here is that when we're talking about these cryptocurrencies, you always have to keep your eye on the total market cap. Now, for some reason, it's not showing it right now, but it, it was $27 billion. And so... What that tells me with Bitcoin kind of faltering, and these others coming in, that tells me that it's actually new money coming in. There is new money coming into the cryptocurrency space as we begin to push towards that $30 billion total market cap for all the cryptocurrencies. Crazy stuff. So we're going to talk about pensions. Again, I know it's a just a topic that's been beaten to death, but I want to talk about pensions because we're going to see that the reason to be in them is not going to be, uh, to, I'm sorry, the reason to be in silver and gold and Bitcoin is not going to be phenomenal returns. Uh, do I believe they'll have phenomenal returns? I do. Bitcoin has already had unbelievable returns that nobody predicted, virtually no one predicted. 
I think the same thing is going to be true with gold and silver. But that doesn't mean that that's their primary purpose. Their primary purpose is to protect what you have. And this collapse is coming. This is from CBS Market Watch. It's opinion piece, but there's a lot of stuff in here. I'm just going to read this and comment because not all of it's accurate. Collapsing pensions will fuel America's next financial crisis. Now, we know that Yellen just did another quarter of a point interest rate increase, and the banks followed on with a quarter point to the prime, which puts the prime rate at 4%. Again, a ridiculously low interest rate, but you can see that the banks are getting about 3% on the spread. So that's a pretty big spread that the banks are protecting themselves with. But how long does it take to raise to normalize rates when you're at uh, 0.75 interest rate and normal rates are five, six, seven, eight percent? Well, at the current pace, it's going to take 20 years just to normalize interest rates. So something's got to give. Obviously, the Fed is very worried uh, about interest rates and raising them too fast. So let's read this. Washington has a knack for ignoring long-term financial shortfalls and painting overly rosy scenarios about the future to make their numbers work in the here and now. Case in point, Donald Trump's unrealistic projection that the U.S. economy will grow at 3% this year when the latest GDP forecasts have actually been reduced to 1.8% by a number of economists. Well, that's completely worthless because we know their GDP forecasts are worthless. it wouldn't surprise me to see Trump turn out and be right, which none of the other politicians have ever been. They've always been wrong, but maybe he can do something. We'll see. Then there is Social Security. Many politicians are just too intimidated, uninformed, or complacent to tackle the unsustainability of Social Security, which by the latest tally will see its trust fund go to zero just 17 years from now in 2034. Now, you have to be a mainstream media moron to talk about a social security trust fund. The quote unquote trust fund is nothing but a bunch of IOUs from the US government. There is no trust fund. If there were a trust fund, then you could ask what assets it's invested in. And it surely wouldn't be US government debt. But 100% of our social security is in US government debt. So there isn't 17 years. As far as I'm concerned, it's already insolvent. I believe it's already insolvent. And I think that as the baby boomers retire in mass, it, it, this number, this year is going to start coming down really fast, and we're going to get a lot of revisions to this. So that's nonsense as well. But while fudging GDP numbers is dangerous for America's economic outlook, and the demise of Social Security in two decades is a serious long-term concern, America faces a mathematical problem that dwarfs both of these items: a pending pension crisis that could leave millions of Americans high and dry in the very near future. Sure, it would be difficult for many if the U.S. economy stumbles under misguided Trump policies. And yes, the idea of even modest cuts to Social Security in the coming decades could seriously affect millions of seniors. Notice that they're already preparing for Trump to get the blame, uh, even though Obama was allowed to, by the media, was allowed to blame the former president for six, seven, even eight years. His entire two terms, he was able to blame the previous president for the problems that we have but they're already setting up to blame Trump even though he hasn't been in off he's only been in office a few months and yes the idea of even modest cuts to social security in the coming decades could seriously affect millions of seniors but take a look at South Carolina's government pension plan which covers roughly 550,000 people one out of nine state residents that's right one out of nine now think about that That means definitely, if it's a state pension plan, that means one out of nine residents work for the state? Can that even be correct? And then how many work for the federal government? How many work for municipal governments? I don't know. Uh, I don't have time to dig into it here, but that's an astounding number. One out of nine residents. This is not a distant concern, but a system crisis, already in crisis. 
Younger workers are being asked to do much more to support the pensions of retirees. An analysis by the Post and Courier of Charleston noted recently that government workers and their employers have seen five hikes in their pension plan contributions since 2012, and there's no end in sight. Most now contribute 8.66% of their pay versus 6.5% before the changes. At the same time, the pension fund has been chasing more stocks and alternative investments instead of relying on stable investments like bonds that may be much less volatile but generate only meager returns. Now, that's fascinating as well. 8.66% is what they're paying, and you know they're going to raise that up. Now, in reality, that's just a pay cut, if you think about it. It's a pay cut for government workers because that money is gone. That money doesn't even exist. The money they're taking, for one thing, comes from taxpayers, but you know that that money is going into a black hole and those most of those workers will never see that money. So in effect, we're talking about government worker pay cuts, less money to take home, and then when the thing blows up, no pension to take home. That's what we're looking at. And if that's not troubling enough, South Carolina Pension Fund is far from alone. The Michigan Public School Employees Retirement System Pension Fund is $26.7 billion underfunded and mind-blowingly has paid out more benefits than it has actual assets in 41 of the last 42 years, according to some estimates. That's probably not uh, assets, but actually contributions. The Mackinac Center for Public Policy has estimated the result of more than one of third more than a third of Michigan school payroll expenses go to retirees not those people actually teaching children in the classroom. Think about that. One third of the tax money that Michigan taxpayers pay to support the schools is a retirement program. That number is going to grow. So as they're reducing services, they're paying out retirement. This is not going to end well. It's not just government employee pensions at risk either. Legislators are debating help for roughly 100,000 coal miners who face serious cuts in pension payments and health care coverage thanks to nearly $6 billion shortfall in the plan for United Mine Workers of America. The Teamsters just got permission to slash benefits by as much as 30% for some 400,000 participants because its central state's pension plan is so deep in the hole. It's a very disturbing trend, and according to one organization, nearly one million working and retired Americans are covered by pension plans at risk of collapse, and many more plans face shortfalls that could become equally problematic if action isn't taken immediately. Well, you know the numbers are much worse than that. That's just what they're reporting and what they're hinting at. So you can bet it's ten times as bad as that. The problem is only going to get worse as payouts remain bloated and investment returns remain hard to come by, with global growth minimal and the interest rate environment still quite low by historical norms. Even in the face of recent Federal Reserve moves, the situation is quite urgent. Now, we know that these pension funds who have been assuming a 7 and 8 percent return have been returning not nearly that high, but have been returning ridiculous amounts even so around 5 and 6%. How have they done it? Well, they've all piled into stocks. They're all piling on the same market. That's how they're doing it. And it's not just stocks. We've seen numerous commentators show how it's the Dow 30 and certain companies in the S&P and NASDAQ that are being pumped up. Well, you know that it's the pension funds that are knee-deep in those as well. So when this thing turns the other way, then these numbers are going to be unbelievable. And you have to remember that for the Fed to get interest rates up to normalize, they're going to have to put interest rates up to 5, 6, 7, 8 percent. Interest rates 5, 6, 7, or 8 percent will bankrupt the U.S. government because of the deficit, um, because of the debt and the continuous deficits and the interest would take virtually all of the tax revenues. So the Fed can't raise interest rates high enough to make pension payout uh, bonds that pension funds hold actually pay a decent rate of return, so they're definitely in a box here. The looming problems of Social Security make things even more disturbing. If older Americans never bothered to build up much in the way of retirement savings because they were expecting their pension to be there, then Social Security is quite literally the only way for them to make ends meet. And if you really want to terrify yourself, think about what would happen to the U.S. economy if older low-income pensioners suddenly have 5 or 10% less to spend on necessities. According to data from 2013, the average household income of someone older than 75 is $34,000. Their average expenses exceed that of 34 
at 34,382. If their benefits are cut, their spending will assuredly fall, and that reduction in spending on food and energy and staples won't be replaced. That's the crisis I fear most, a dramatic reduction in benefits to millions of pensioners and the failure of Social Security to bridge the gap and a substantial decline in consumer spending as a result. So here's your typical Keynesianism. Uh, I mean, really, if you're taking tax money and you're creating spending by tax money, then uh, that's no stimulus to the economy. There's also a serious concern about whether simply cutting benefits or boosting contributions is enough as global growth slows and fixed income investments yield significantly lower than in recent years. As I wrote a few months ago, some investment experts expect as little as 4% annual returns in U.S. equities and bonds to yield less than 2% for many years to come. So what do we do? Unfortunately, there are no easy answers. Pension reform, as with Social Security, is most equitably approached as a combination of benefit cuts, increased contributions, and higher eligibility ages. But since those solutions tend to offend all stakeholders, it's difficult to get past the inertia. That's an understatement. However, America is rapidly approaching a point of no return. Say what you will about the solvency of Social Security and the imperative acting on admittedly imperfect calculations that still give us a good 15 to 20 years until the trust runs dry. But the millions of Americans relying on underfunded pension plans have an urgent need for reform in 2017. And if they don't get it, they could have serious effects on the American economy for decades. Well, uh, you know, millions of Americans relying on underfunded pension plans is actually prob they're probably in better off shape than millions and millions of Americans relying on a bankrupt Social Security trust fund that doesn't even exist. It's already pay as you go or borrow as you go. So uh, a good a good source of information for some pension stories but of course terrible analysis from a mainstream economist. So what's the takeaway from all this? Well, I think you already know what is the answer, and that's going to be silver and gold. Silver especially so cheap right now. You can see we're just hanging around 1730, 1750. Um, we're getting a little bit of a rally here with the interest rate increase. The dollar is kind of faltering. So it's possible perhaps here that the uh, bond or the dollar bears uh, are are starting to sell dollars. You can see the euros picking up a little bit here and um, the yen. So it, perhaps that they were expecting more of an increase or more hawkish statements from the Federal Reserve. Traditionally, higher interest rates will push money into the dollar. That doesn't necessarily, that's not necessarily the case, especially in these manipulated markets. But the traditional analysis is that um, when a country raises interest rates, that attracts foreign capital to take advantage of those interest rates. As long as the currency is stable, then that will tend to strengthen the currency as that money flows in. That's the traditional model, but we haven't been operating on traditional uh, theories and models because of all the money printing and craziness from the Federal Reserve. So that might not be valid analysis. But the bottom line is that both silver and gold are not just, in my opinion, going to be great performers when the panic comes. Because remember, the panic hasn't come yet. We're seeing a little bit of money dribble into the cryptocurrencies up to about a $30 billion market cap. Uh, gold and silver, the yearly mining yield of silver is just say a billion. You know, it's not even $20 billion. Um, so we're not really seeing that money come into gold and silver, but we will, and I think that will make for stellar performance. But at the same time, there's no question that the system of the pensions, Social Security, and all the rest is an absolute Ponzi scheme. It will collapse upon itself, especially when the stock market turns down or interest rates spike up. Um, the whole thing is going to collapse, and you can expect there's going to be massive benefit cuts, probably going to be asset seizures, possibly going to be hyperinflation. And at that point, you're going to be very glad that you have been stacking silver. And we'll talk to you next time.